welcome to the Carson City Cultural Commission meeting. It's 5.30, so we'll go ahead and start. Um, can we have roll call, please? Yes, Sandra Nagel. Present. Karen About. Present. Eleanor Bugley. Present. Terry. Present. <laughs> 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 Terry McBride. <laughs> Barbara Deneo. Present. And Janet Geary? Present. And Lupe Ramirez? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Okay, at this time, we'd like to invite public no. comment. The public is invited at this time to comment on and discuss any topic nice. that is relevant to or within the authority of the Carson City Cultural Commission. In order for members of the public to participate, uh, in the Commission's consideration of an agenda item, the Cultural Commission strongly encourages members of the public to comment on an item during the item itself in the agenda, subject to a three-minute time limit. Uh, no action may be taken on a matter raised under public comment unless the item has been specifically included on the agenda. So, public comment. Welcome. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, I'm Myron Friedman, Director of the Nevada State Museum. Uh, I'm not here to comment, but to give you a little report on a wonderful arts and culture event that uh, took place in Carson City earlier in the month. This was our Day of the Dead celebration at the Nevada State Museum. This was done in partnership with the WNC Latino cohort, led by one Lupe Ramirez, and Carson Arts and Culture, led by Mark Salinas. It was a fantastic partnership that produced a wonderful weekend of events. I want to thank our sponsors for the events, which allowed us to have free admission to the museum. And you'll see the impact of that in just a minute. The sponsors were the Carson City Culture and Tourism Authority, the Western Nevada Materials Company, and Nevada Mining Association. With their support, we were able to open the doors for free. For our November 2nd event, which was our opening celebration with the traditional altars, the ofrendas, created by schools in Carson City, Dayton, and Reno. We had wonderful support from the Hacienda Market and Grill, who sponsored prizes for the best ofrenda. From Central Market, who provided traditional Day of the Dead Pan de Muertos treats for that night. We also had some wonderful hot chocolate prepared by Lupe. On November 4th, we had a family fun celebration, again, open free to the public due to our support from, from our sponsors. We had an El Dia de los Muertos Arts and Crafts uh, uh, Activity Center upstairs for the young ones. And we had a wonderful time decorating sugar skulls for, for the entire day. An Aztec dance troupe from St. Teresa de Avila performed traditional Aztec dances. Ballet Folklorico International performed scenes and dances that told the story of El Dia de los Muertos uh, in, uh, throughout time and, and in Latino culture. So between the two days, just under 1,000 people attended the museum. It was, it was a wonderful success. So I want to thank Lupe, and I want to thank the Latino cohort volunteers, the museum volunteers, Mark, the Culture and Tourism Board, Nevada Mining, Western Nevada Materials. We had a wonderful cultural celebration, and we're going to plan another one for next year. So thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, for the record, Terry McNutt, General Manager at Silver Oak Golf Course and Conference Center. Uh, thank you for allowing me a couple of minutes to tell you what we're doing at Silver Oak Golf Course now. Pretty excited about it. Uh, I have been involved with arts and culture for many years, dear to my heart, and I've always wanted to bring something to the golf course because we have a huge, beautiful golf course, so why not utilize it? So what we're doing, something out of the box, but I'm hoping it'll be very successful. We think it will be. As many of you may know, uh, the owner of the golf course has an extensive automobile collection. Very extensive. Uh, one of his favorites is Cadillacs. We are bringing in, have already brought in, many of his very old Cadillacs, and we buried them in the driving range. They're either head in or back in, halfway down in the ground. Golfers are actually hitting golf balls at them. So we have also brought in uh, antique, very old golf carts, very small golf carts that kids can hit at. 
So again, it's a, it's a community family thing. Uh, things that I do in the community always involves community and family. So hopefully that will all come together. Now why I'm here tonight is to tell you about the arts part of it. We have opened a contest for our Cadillac driving range and I've brought you all flyers for all kinds of artists, including children. They're going to be able to pick a car, a Cadillac in the driving range, pick their own theme for that Cadillac, paint it, and then we're gonna give awards away. All levels, the kids will be able to pick the golf carts because they're smaller, and of course the adults, the Cadillacs, will have all kinds of awards and prizes, monetary awards for the adults, and uh, all kinds of other fun awards for the kids, uh, on all three different levels of kids. So uh, it's something for everyone. Uh, I believe that families could be involved. Family could pick a car and do it as a family group if they want. Uh, a group of friends could do it. A club at the high school could do it. I've already asked, I've already had someone at the high school ask me about uh, from the Indian class if they could do an Indian theme. I said, whatever you want. So they'll be able to submit their application. Uh, we ha I have all the information for you. I won't go into detail for you tonight, but I have flyers for all of you and information so you can read about it and see what's about. It's also on our website, silveroakgolf.com. Uh, the applications are just now coming out. The deadline is uh, January 31st. We will then pick um, the winners uh, based on a committee that's going to pick the winners to be able to pick their cars. And we're using Western Nevada Community College artists to help do that. And then starting March 1st, they'll be able to start painting their cars. So hopefully next year I'll be back here to tell you all the fun things that are going on with all those different themes on our golf course in the driving range actually hitting at real cars. So uh, it should be colorful, it should be fun, and hopefully it will add to the arts and culture of our community and give some families some more things to, to do. So thank you for your two minutes, and I will leave flyers for all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Terry. Good evening. Welcome. How's everyone tonight? A few of you know who I am. I'd like to thank Mark for inviting me to introduce myself to you all tonight. My name is Rhonda Aubin. I'm the founder and director of the Carson City Classic Cinema Club. For the past three and a half years, we have been quietly and gradually growing and uh, making a small impact in the community, and it's time for us to step that up a little bit. So we're, we're ramping up our marketing and our membership drive this year. We are a 501c3. We show classic films at the Brewery Arts Center the first Tuesday of every month, just for fun, and as an opportunity to raise a little bit of money to help kids get involved in the arts. That's our main mission. We also are working on uh, presenting some community events this summer with uh, DBA members that we're affiliated with. Um, through our memberships, admissions, raffles, and our annual Hollywood Gala, we've raised money to, uh, we sponsored the uh, art camp at the Children's Museum. We have donated instrument tuners to the school district and youth orchestra. We've been able to send a couple of girls to dance class and sponsor some of the band members that are a little less fortunate. So we've got a, a strong partnership with uh, Dr. Fox at the school district. We want to continue doing that. We are also um, in talks with Superintendent Stokes to work directly with the schools to see what programs they have available and where the holes are that we might be able to help fill. So as I said, we're, we're in our membership drive right now, and I'd like to invite you all to come see what we're about, have some fun with us with our trivia and our raffles, and uh, perhaps get involved. I also have, these are 2017 brochures. There's a, uh, an insert in there with uh, 2018's titles, and there's also a guest pass in there, so there's no excuse. <laughs> so I'll leave these for you. And I'd also like to thank Mark for his he wasn't off the plane very long before I got a hold of him and, and started bending his ear about us. And he's been a, a strong supporter of ours. And he's been working very hard to get us in, in uh, flyers and, and whatever he can to get the word out about us. 
So thank you. Hope we see you soon. Hello, uh, my name is Tony Manfredi. I'm the new executive director for the Nevada Arts Council. Um, Mark had invited me to come to the commission and just say hello and give a, a quick welcome and uh, just so grateful and appreciative to be a part of the Arts Council and certainly appreciate Mark as his role as a board member and uh, I'm excited to learn more about everything that you all are doing and how we can help and contribute. So that'll do it. Thank you. Thank you very much, and welcome to Carson City. Yeah. I think we should note that we have like more people in the audience <laughs> than on this side of the room, for once, right? And, and I don't think we're in trouble either, which is a good thing. All right. Anyone else? No? Okay, uh, item number four is the approval of the September 11th. Uh, Cultural Commission meeting minutes. Uh, does anybody have any comments or corrections to make? I have one correction that I overlooked. It's the inclusion of Kyle's name in the September 11th meeting. Uh, he wasn't. He was absent. So we'll get that scratched. Um, I just have a couple of things. Let's see. On uh, page two, under item number seven, Da Vinci is spelled wrong a couple of places. It's it should be D A V I N C I, not D E D I V I N C I. I think it's in two places. Um, also, I would suggest to those who were working on the minutes to avoid references to dates of events like tomorrow or next Friday in the minutes. Like actually include the date just for clarification purposes. Just a suggestion. On page three under item number nine um, when Gina Hill from the Brewery Arts Center gives um, her presentation, uh, the second sentence says that this commission gave them $6,500. We didn't do that. We didn't give them $6,500. And just for f clarification, what it should read as it, is that the Carson City Cultural Commission recommended funding of 6500 which was approved. Because we didn't give them, we don't give money. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Okay, and then under um, item number 10, when I'm giving the update on the Stewart stuff, um, on the third line down, it says Miss McBride would like to invite Miss Rader um, add in their museum director because we don't introduce her earlier in that paragraph, so it's not clear who Bobby Radar Raider is. Could you repeat that, please, so I can take note? So, under 10, the steward update that I give, uh, the third line down, Miss McBride would like to invite Miss Raider and then put comma museum director to our January meeting because it's not clear who she is. <clears throat> and then finally, I would um, really like it if there could be a global search and destroy of all references to us as a board, because that's confusing. Every time I read the board, I think the Board of Supervisors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so if you can just do a global search and destroy and just switch it to commission, that would be great. And that's all I have. So do I have a motion to approve the I minutes? I move we approve the minutes as changed. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion approved. And uh, now we're on number five of tonight's agenda. Uh, the act so it, the adoption of the agenda. Do we need to take anything out of order as 
written on tonight's agenda? Um, there will be one thing out of order 8B, the um, marketing update from the marketing manager. He's absent today, so we will not be getting that um, update from him over the past two months. Okay. All right, thank you. So then number six, um, a presentation by the Nevada Gourd Society. Hi, I'm Christy Dial, and I am the president of the Nevada Gourd Society and a past vice president of the American Gourd Society. I don't know if any of if you all know what gourds are, but okay. Um, we have 60 members here in the state of Nevada. We just started a couple years ago, 2016, and we have about 40 up here in uh, Carson City. Last year, the, Amer the American Gourd Society also has over, oh, two or 3,000 members nationwide. They, ra raised, they had a raffle. They raised $1,700. We won it as a state uh, society because we gathered the most, most members quickly. So we have $1,700. What are we going to do with this? We want to promote gourd art in the community. And we voted that we would have a, an art festival. And my thought process was not many people know gourds. And when I proposed this to the majority of women in our group, um, they all were deer in the headlights and thought, we don't, <laughs> I don't know what we're doing, is what they were thinking. Um, so I decided that looking at Carson City and how it is, there's not a great deal of opportunity for art venues. They, we have the Candy Dance in Genoa, their craft shows. Um, their galleries. And so I was thinking, well, let's have an art festival and not just gourds. So we included um, fine artists. We had award-winning photographers and painters um, um, in our show. So it was a very, how do I say that, across the board art, which was really nice. We had um, the Peruvian group that plays, they, they played music there for us. We held art classes out in the lawn. Um, we had like 160 students taking classes for the three days. So it was a great event. And what we did, we also had at the event was we had held a raffle. Um, we got uh, products from the community and from our artists and we sold tickets. And we had decided that we were going to donate that money to other nonprofit organizations here in town. So we, um, it was going to be the proceeds. We turned out giving all of the money. We t assumed all the cost and gave all the money that we raised. So we were able to give $1,000 to Kids and Horses. And my brother was very kind to match that $1,000, which was really nice, from his family, for fa the Joe Colt, Judy Gans Family Ford Founda Family Foundation. So that was great. And then we donated another 500 to the um, Holiday with a Hero. So that was great. And both of these organizations, subsequent to this, I didn't know either one, um, we've talked to them about doing more work through art with their groups. Kids and horses, the therapy we can do with we can do art, and also with the kids it, with the holiday with a hero that you know low income foster student, children and such not. So, it's actually helped a lot of us. It's gotten us out of the art group, just our little group getting together, and also it's exposed the like the holiday with a hero or the kids and horses. Those folks wouldn't have come to the festival. They wouldn't have been exposed to the art side of it. So that's what we're hoping to do, is to continue to uh, bring more art into the thing and I, into the community, other than just galleries or craft shows. We want art out there as well. So, Christy, can I ask, so when was this event? It was uh, the weekend of the candy dance. OK. Uh, it was September 23rd and 4th. And where was it? It was Fuji Hall, okay. right across from Car uh, Costco. And it was three days. Uh, three days of classes, two days with a indoor art festival. In every, they we had 35 vendors. Wow! Um, and they all had a 10 by 10 space, um, or you know, so. And um, it, are you planning on doing another one next year or in the next few years? No, we're going to do it again. Okay, and is um, 
would it be helpful to have the um, Culture and Tourism Authority help promote that in the the next time you do that? Absolutely. Okay. Um, I must thank Mark and his group down at the Visitor Center. They were very helpful. Um, the newspapers have been responsive. It was me kind of feeling my way. I don't know the whole media mechanism here, but if you all could be behind us, it would be tremendous. Because a lot of the people that were coming to the... During that weekend, and this is no offense to the candy dance, but a lot of people were saying, we've been there, done that. And I think they were very excited about seeing something new. And to have maybe art in the valley around that time in September would be fabulous, with different events happening, not just ours. But it was very well attended. So Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, I wanted to invite uh, Christy here because there's often uh, studies about the economic, economic impact of arts to communities vis-a-vis uh, -vis audiences and events. But here's an example of a non-for-profit arts organization giving to the community, fundraising, and giving that money. And I think sometimes maybe, I, I might be wrong, but like maybe the studies overlook that there's actually that happening. So I thought it was really important to have her show up here and, and put us... Uh, on her radar and vice versa. It's a Carson City Arts organization and um, we can definitely help them at the Visitors Bureau as far as printing is concerned and marketing and you know we have grants as well. So thank you. And <laughs> it's, it's the same with the Cinema Club. Exactly. They're, they're doing that. It's not uncommon. <clears throat> Oh. Yeah, for the record, it's Barbara Dineo. I'd like to ask Mark um, and the Tourist Authority, please, it, maybe next year, can we just get a list of all the various organizations and opportunities and times of the year? Because it would be nice to know what's happening when so that <coughs> the different arts groups are not stepping on top of each other and we can get that calendared so we can do this. That would have been, a, I love gourds, it would have been a wonderful thing to go to. So thank you so much. I agree, I hear you. Um, thank you. It takes. It takes work to get people here in those audience seats, and there are, there have been a lot of events. We've seen them in the past year that I've been here that I've reached out to these organizations time and time again, and it's no response. So um, I think this is one step in the right direction, but it would be nice to have that unity. I'm hoping that, you know, I've said it before, I'm hoping that these uh, meetings are the water cooler of everything happening in arts and culture in Carson City. So. And I'd like to just add, Mark, um, if you know, if we have that information for the magazine, we do put out an events and shows yeah. publication every other month. And if we could have that information for Nevada Magazine and for our events and shows, we'd be more than happy to promote it through our magazine plus our um, our Facebook and Twitter awesome. pages. Fantastic. Yeah, I, th I, I mean, if we just had that information beforehand, and we try to get as <clears> much <throat> as we can, but a lot of it slips through the cracks. So thank you. anybody that would like to get that to us, we'd be more than happy to promote it. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Hello. Maureen Conlon, and I'm here to talk a little bit about a new organization that I'm working on, a nonprofit called Arts for Children of Nevada. This is going to be a program where children will receive art, but give back to the community. So there'll be classes in music, art, creative writing, poetry, anything, puppetry, clowning, um, just about anything. There, I'm an early childhood music educator. I've been here for eight years throughout Carson Valley, Reno. Um, I was in Arizona for 21 years doing this, and um, there's a need for it. There's a lack of programs for the children that are affordable that they can actually go to. So I'm hoping to have a center where the kids can come, but then an example would be a ukulele group of youth, and then they would give back by playing for the seniors. So everything would be that circle of people will help and donate their time, the children will learn, and then the children will give back. So one of the projects that I'd like to talk about tonight, I actually put a little thing together, um, is doing, an example would be a mosaic project. So I have a daughter in Tucson, Arizona, who's done 157 of these huge wall mosaics. So it is a community art-based project. 
So the children would make the pieces, they'd um, carve, learn the, uh, that art, and then, in, then they would put it together, and then we'd have volunteers, volunteers after we were able to allocate space where it would go up in the community, and then we, that takes about a week for the installation. So she is willing to come out. I'm working on fundraising and doing that kind of thing once I get everything up and running so that we have that. That would be one example of what I'm hoping this organization to be able to do. Another would be children that are learning art. They actually create the art for maybe children that are in the hospital or that are sick. So each example, each class would have some way to give back to the community. So which ties into what... <laughs> of the gores we're doing and everything. Um, so I did get a grant from Legal Aid to set up the nonprofit. I'm working on putting together a board of directors. Um, it's going to be based on uh, private donors, which I have a few already, um, some grants and awards, um, sponsorships. So an example would be somebody in the community may sponsor a child so that I'm able to get the ukulele. They come and they learn. And then in return, like I said, give it back to different groups when they need it or the seniors. Um, let's see, what else? <laughs> There's a ton of ideas that I have. Um, the beauty of this is a lot of these I can begin by implementing myself. I'm an artist and a musician as well until I get people in the community. I've already had a number of people step up. I have a woman that would love to teach the children harmonica. I have somebody else that would do quilting with the kids so that they in turn could make blankets for one of the organizations that might need them. Um, African drumming, bell choir, choirs, um, puppetry would be fun for the children. Children writing their own music and writing their own prose and, you know, having that somehow return to the community as well. So, um, any questions? <laughs> Do you have a facility to hold I the classes? I am working on um, a facility. I'm waiting for approval. If I don't get that facility... I have a lot of sal satellite areas to do these classes. Um, I've also talked to Beth at the Children's Museum because they have the kilns. They have, and this is how that actually came about. I had applied for the executive director job there and didn't get it. And I was like, oh, no. And then I went, wait a minute. I, I can do all this. This can still be done. And that's where the nonprofit idea was born. Um, and there are a lot of, especially seniors in the community that have such gifts and talents that they could share with these children. And there are future in the arts. I get very passionate about this. So. Um, there are future in the arts, and I want to see them. I work with them from age two years old up. So this program would be for two to 16-year-olds that they could come in. And I'd like to work with um, Boys and Girls Club, the library, all the different organizations. I feel like... There's not a troubadour to gather all these children's arts together. There's pieces everywhere. And we just need to kind of pull it together and find a way for not only the kids to learn where they can afford it. I always say there's a hidden Picasso and Mozart out there. They just haven't had the opportunities to learn. So that's what I'm hoping to do with this project. So any questions? Yes. Do you have a card or a brochure or something I, you that know what? you could I give to us? I put together um, a little flyer. So in the back is information about who I am and what I've done. And then I have a couple of pictures of examples where, of the mosaics that you can see. And as well as um, some of the activities. I definitely am looking for help. And like I said, I am looking for board of directors. But one of the gentlemen said, make sure you find people with a lot of money. So anybody <laughs> wants to help with that, that works too. Um, but yeah, we're putting that together. So we're going to probably be meeting early December. And then I'm going through the process with legal aid to get everything all set up and fine-tuned. And the name will be Arts for Children of Nevada, or AFCON. So, and there will be satellite. I know um, there's different places I can rent very inexpensively space. Eventually, I've talked for Arts for All up in Reno because they have trouble getting people down here to teach the arts. So working with them to coordinate that kind of thing. Um, Notables is another one that I'm going to be meeting with. I, I just feel like let's pull it together and really push this for the kids of our area. So if there's no questions, <laughs> thank you. Mark, can we make sure and get copies from Rhonda and Maureen? And we already have the Gord Society handout. Thank you. We'll, we'll, put, we'll put that information at the front door for everyone. Okay. Uh, 
We're on number eight on the agenda, uh, Director of Arts and Culture Report by Mark Salinas. Good evening. And I just want to thank everyone for showing up here tonight, really. Um, it's a good feeling to see people out there who are interested in, in exchanging that communication, you know. I apologize, it should be the Cultural Commission logo up there. But let's get on to good stuff. As you know, we, we, we meet every other month, and so a lot of these dates have already passed. It's my goal. We used to meet quarterly. This, yes, this year we're meeting every other month, and it's my goal to eventually, Chris, bear with me, meet every month. Yes. You know, because there's, there's a lot of stuff where, you know, that's, that would be an indicator that we're, we're on the right track. Anyhow, so here we go. Uh, artistic bike rack, you know, the update is that I'm looking for uh, welders who are um, licensed, bonded, and insured as per city code, um, to create these, um, these bike racks. It's an ongoing process, it's a long-term process. When events pop up, I will certainly let you know. Uh, you might have, mentioned, you might have uh, noticed a large piece of sculpture out in the front lawn. This is the Michelle Riley Da Vinci update, and I just want to walk everyone through the process of how this, how this went down, because you know we are uh, ambassadors of this project. And so I think uh, the more we know about how it got here, what it is, the better we can communicate that to the rest of Nevada. So here we are, this is Castanelli digging up uh, the footprint of the sculpture. The sculpture is mounted to, permanently mounted to a, a rectangular base. And so the, from the aerial view, we sort of uh, created sort of a bow tie shape that allowed us to actually rotate it a bit once it was on the crane coming down. Once you have the 7.5 tons down on the ground, you don't want to have to lift it up again. And then, as opposed to the installation at UNR's library where that that pallet was just rested on the grass. We were putting that below grade. So Castanelli went in here. Uh, we had our public art uh, panel meeting. It was recommended by the city engineer that we put some extra gravel and stuff in there, pounding it down to avoid any uh, moving of the soil over winter months. Here we go. Isn't that a great picture with the sea hill behind it? Anyhow, so this is about where we are right now. Um, Castanelli is done. Uh, the the sod has not been replaced because now uh, Bragg Elect uh, Electrical uh, Company is going to come in and, and, and drop in um, whatever conduit they need to put in some lights. Two uh, bulbs in the front, one in the back, as per what we agreed upon in our meeting. So I'm super excited about this. Now, really, the work begins. Uh, the past couple, you know, September was, I was, get, you know, getting the word out everywhere about our capital collage. I met at the Reno Arts um, Consortium up there, upper right-hand corner, even um, Tahoe Arts in South Lake Tahoe, um, and uh, the Edon uh, uh, breakfast luncheon in, in Reno, and they actually... Um, the picture is a little too small, but they had brought to mention uh, Michelle Riley that she's doing a commission of uh, building several of these um, concrete wolves that will, will be painted and circulated. So they're actually highlighting her, and it was nice to meet the woman behind that and say, guess what we just bought. Um, this project was spearheaded by uh, Nevada Arts Council board member Ryrie uh, Valdez, and this was a fantastic project that showed how Carson City can actually do uh, a collaboration with the Nevada, uh, the Museum of Art in, uh, in, in Reno. And this was uh, an artistic Huey helicopter that, that was fallen in Vietnam, uh, put back together and, and painted and is sort of a uh, post-traumatic uh, programming is, is aligned with it. And this is um, the mayor and some other dignitaries speaking here. Uh, it was on display in Reno and then came down here to Carson City. And I thank Amanda Horn from the museum um, in making sure that all the communication and, and assets were aligned uh, between our two cities. The upper left-hand corner is a trunk of my car. Now, um, there's a, a hidden talent at the Carson City Library across the street, and that's Kathy Rush. And um, she would send me these Excel sheets with the SKU number of what materials to pick up at, at Home Depot. 
and through her graciousness, she allowed several of uh, Lupe's students from WNC to her backyard to build our True Grit Parade float. This is a, um, a carrot I put out to the NEA saying if they granted us funding, that we would pre-celebrate by making a NEA Big Read True Grit float. And so this is it under construction. Later on in my presentation, you'll see how that turned out. Not too shabby. Uh, October 10 to 13, I uh, was joined by uh, Tony Manfredi here in, in our audience and another board member uh, at NASA, which is the National Assembly of State Arts Agencies. It was an opportunity for um, state art executives and the board members to convene. Uh, there's a whole bunch of programming, um, educational seminars, breakouts, um, classes. This is an interesting picture I just wanted to throw up on the, on the screen for you because um, this is the state arts agency and how they're structured throughout the United States. Now you see we are, um, the Nevada Arts Council is under the Department of Tourism which you'll see indicated in brown. So we do share some commonality through other states, but you'll see it under Department of State, under Department of Economic, uh, Economic and Commerce. It's, it's a fasc fascinating opportunity to sort of rub elbows with other people, like-minded individuals, in creating a um, you know, future for, for arts nationwide. In this presentation, we were joined by Jane Chu, the, the chair of the Nevada um, National Endowment of the Arts. Um, Commissioner Abad, I, I believe you were there with us at the museum when she joined our table. And she, this was, so she did a roll call of all the states. She went to every state last year, and this was the slide that she put up, and she spoke to Art Town. Now what we see up there is we see Beth McMillan in Art Town. We see the Nevada Arts Council recognized. We see Sierra Net, Nevada Ballet, one of our grant recipients. Poetry Out Loud. And my goal you know, in attending these things is to get exposure and input so that next year, maybe we're up there with our True Grit, you know, event. Um, I was pleased that um, the mural, Reno Mural Expo uh, reached out to us for, uh, for some added exposure and marketing by promoting their mural event. That gave us some traffic through our websites. Some of the murals that we have here, the muralists uh, here in Carson were, were working up there in Reno. Um, I attended the uh, Reno Tahoe American Marketing Association lunch, and my colleague Alexis Hill in Reno was speaking to them about their arts program. And of course, you know, it's always important to know what your neighbors are doing. I'm not interested in competing with Reno, I consider them a friend. But if there's no communication, if, if there's no exchange, then everyone's their own silo, you know? But so they had some great ideas. She was uh, showing them the top, and these are to marketing uh, uh, individuals and agencies, explaining to them the top 10 reasons to support the arts. I mean, I might steal an idea there too. But, uh, and so here's a Bicentennial Park sculpture that I believe Christine Faye spearheaded, and that is, I think that was founded by the Rotary Club. So, Commissioner Deneo. We might be knocking on our Carson City Rotary Club to do something similar. Um, of course, their app has uh, indicators of all the art. And look at this. This is where I want to get with our um, our, our regrant from that RAC grant. Uh, a nice, beautiful one-page visual of how it breaks down. Right now, I think the application is hidden in our website. I think only the people know about are the ones that apply for it, and that doesn't do um, us or. Or, or the grantees any favor. So let's get there. The Arts Environment Conference was in Reno, and what we have here are four, uh, five, uh, I, I can count, I assure you, five of the six uh, founders of Burning Man. So on the far left, Michael Michael, and on the far right, um, Will Peterson were our uh, Grand Marshal and Grand Dignitaries of our Nevada Day Parade. Now, in being advocates of this a uh, piece of sculpture that was debuted at Burning Man. Let's look at what Burning Man is, because I'm sure everyone here in this room has pre you know, preconceived notions of what that is. This is the analytics of Burning Man. The median age is 30 to 34. Uh, 72, almost three-fourths of them have bachelor degrees or above. And, and one-fifth of all attendees are coming from outside the U.S. Now, that's an interesting statistic being that they become the fourth, no, the third, they bump us to the fourth largest city. They become the third largest city in Nevada. That's an interesting statistic from a Department of Tourism uh, perspective in that we advertise globally. Something happened called Capital Collage. 
and I want to th really thank uh, the commissioners that attended. This was a, a giant um, petri dish, and I, and I think um, I know I, t I took away a lot from it, and I think it was really a, a moment, uh, an evening of awareness of what we could do and what's out there. I'm just going to show some slides. This is at the Boys and Girls Club for the audience members who weren't there. Uh, we rented the place. This was an opportunity to uh, create a new identity, a new pr creative profile for Carson City, and that we uh, are going to charge ourselves with being the cohesion, the creative cohesion throughout the state. So one night juxtaposition of of what the entire state has to offer. Native American dancers, artists from Las Vegas. Uh, Commissioner Ramirez, I believe this is the same organization that, that, uh, that performed at the, at the museum. Uh, these people were from Dayton, but um, artists and organizations from all over Nevada, we got away with a lot. I'm a board member there at the Boys and Girls Club. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Andy. Uh, we were able to <laughs> hang aerialists from the ceiling. We had... Um, we broke pinatas, we had a digital photo booth. Uh, the background is the first place winner from Reno's 24-hour uh, mural marathon. Uh, stilters, live painters, DJs, and fire in the parking lot. So that's a controlled burn. So that was, it was quite uh, an expansive um, an exhausting uh, first stab at this. We put our toes in the water. I think we made some ripples and we'll see where we go. Um, I will say that uh, not only did we break even, this is a first time event, okay? We've never done this before. Uh, we made $2,338. So that's something we didn't have. And that money is, uh, as opposed to the, uh, the RAC re-grant that we do, which is um, aligned and dedicated to a certain footprint of Carson City, primarily the downtown region. This money does not have that restrictions, and my goal is to get what we do to the co all corners of Carson City. So, hooray for us for doing that. This is a close-up of the picture, the painting that uh, Talia Cabal made for us. And here's the, um, here's that, that junk in my back seat of my car. <laughs> <clears throat> this is a fantastic, this is like a 22 foot long rattlesnake and if you're familiar with uh, the novel True Grit that we're making our 30 days of programming, a rattlesnake, I won't ruin the book or the movie for you, a rattlesnake um, is a big twister character at the very end of it, it kind of turns the story on its ear. So if you haven't, if you're not familiar, pick up a book. Isn't that cool? That's, that's layers of foam glued together. Remember uh, Commissioner Ramirez, they were gluing that? And the hat and the bandana and the eye patch was made by Patchwork Giraffe. I mean, it was really, it's really fantastic. And uh, so uh, Sina at the library and I are trying to figure out, uh, we don't want this to collect dust. I think this is an incredible work of art. And we're going to be singing this a lot May, June next year. But I'm trying to think of a way to um, get this out there. Of course, these beautiful uh, parasols and floats were really a showstopper as well. This was the parade vehicle I was on. Almost lost my eyebrows. <laughs> and uh, we had NBC in interviewing uh, Michael Michael, our Grand Marshal. The governor set foot upon our uh, float, and there's Michelle Riley in the center. She was pretty happy with that. Afterwards, I want to extend my gratitude to Cafe at Adele's um, for hosting a lunch for um, the Prague dignitaries and their significant others, and we had a fantastic time. Um, new friendships were made, and I, and uh, the last thing that uh, Will Peterson said was, "I hope you invite me back next time." I was asked to be a juror for um, the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. They do an annual uh, recycling competition. And so congratulations to Chase and Emily. These, these are two local Carson City artists that won the state competition. Uh, neither one of them was available tonight to show up, but we'll, we'll see him. We'll see him soon. Um, Joel and I took off to the Nevada Art Council's annual conference in Las Vegas, Arts of the Heart. Um, fantastic opportunity for um, 
art administrators and artists and nonprofits to, to get together. Um, your eyes don't deceive you. You actually see the Carson City Culture and Tourism Authority's logo there. We were able to sponsor a dinner. Um, Heidi Swank and all the municipal arts and culture uh, arts and culture directors from throughout the state uh, were there. Um, and if you're wondering you know, what, you know, what happens at these things, well, a lot of information sessions. This is Amanda Horn speaking about the communication marketing strategy of not only the museum, but just uh, you know, good um, methods to follow. You, know, you don't need a big budget to create success. Strong planning leads to success. Attention to detail is critical. And, um, and she actually reached out to me wanting to know what the events were for 2018 because they, the museum wants to consider being involved meaning coming down here and doing stuff. Um, the, I think the arts, yeah, the, the Las Vegas Arts Commission was celebrating the 30th anniversary that weekend when we were there, and this is just sort of a ceremony. They commissioned an artist to uh, create this. It was a little outdoor garden. And my colleague, Joe O'Neill, who's a board member of the NAC, asked me, uh, Commissioner Ramirez, I wasn't here for our Day of the Dead competition, but I was in Vegas for theirs. So I did my do Latino duty. So uh, these are just some pictures from, from that, and that was a great time. Uh, after that, West Staff uh, had an arts conference, uh, the Future History of Public Art that I attended. Um, this is you know, an, an academic um, forum and speaking about, um, well, the future, I mean, look at the title. <laughs> the future history of it. But it was a fantastic opportunity to also um, cross paths again with some of those uh, administers, uh, art administrators that I met in Portland. And these are people who have written policies and procedures for public art. These people have spearheaded capital improvement projects for cities. These are the great resources for me uh, and for Carson City going forward. Uh, Candy Chang was one of the um, celebrated artists at this event and you might have seen her work. She does a lot of work where she takes abandoned buildings, covers it with chalkboard paint, and then we'll, st we'll, then we'll stencil a template like, uh, before I die, I want to, and then there's a line. And she just gets global recognition because everyone picks up a piece of chalk. It's almost like a, it's almost like, um, like the simple form of social media. You know, where everyone is drawn to it, and it's not a click, they actually get involved and, and write it. Uh, the, sort of like an analog of social media. Um, Hawaii is actually the first state to uh, spearhead a capital improvement project, and their state's arts agency is in their state museum. It's, it's an interesting, interesting um, template that you have there. And, and one of the uh, colleagues that I met from Calgary. Their arts program is run strictly through their park, their, their PW, through their public works. And this is a project an artist made. They had some street events, but they never had enough water fountains. So what you see here is a, is a removable water fountain made by an artist. So whenever they have sort of like their epic rides, they pull this out and they attach it to their fire hydrant. It's kind of spectacular. Uh, Beth McMillan from Art Town uh, invited me to attend, to be their guest at the Western Industrial Nevada uh, breakfast uh, just, I think, this week at the Atlantis. Uh, Beth, of course, was one of the arts organizations that Jane Chu had mentioned. And uh, Randy Cohen, the VP of Research and Policy uh, for Americans for the Arts, was there. And you'll recall the NAC did a presentation of the Arts and Economic Prosperity Report. Um, these are at the front door. I've also put them in your envelope. This is great, uh, great stats and accurate stats upon how um, art makes a cultural, uh, sorry, art makes an economic impact. Um, Reno had hired him to do an assessment specifically for Reno, so that's why he was there. And then um, Chair McBride and I attended, um, oh, what, what did they call that room? The Nevada Room at the Governor's Mansion? It's the Nevada Room at yeah. the Governor's Mansion. For the American Indian Achievement Award. And here we have um, a high school group from Alaska doing a performance. And the Visitors Bureau was able to, um, to arrange some um, hotel stays for them while they were here doing a tour of Carson City. But fantastic uh, talent there and culture there. And, and Sherry Rupert spoke about the future of, of um, Stewart Indian School. And I know, I think for our January agenda, we were going to invite Bobby 
Raider to uh, to speak. And then, you know, I like to follow. I just like to close my presentation with just some press that uh, we were able to get. This was a screenshot I did, I think, last week. Uh, let's see, 361, 360 likes plus Garrett Lapierre. Garrett, thank you. 361 likes <laughs> on this. Uh, this was another screenshot, uh, 690. And you know, it, this installation is causing communication. It's, 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 it's creating dialogue, you know, which is what art is supposed to do. It's supposed to disrupt your boring day to day and get you excited, get your blood flowing. Um, my colleague here at Getaway was able to post our uh, Capital Collage, the magazine. I reached out to Courtney Bloomer. I know that when I did the fashion films in February, ticket sales went up after I did this, so I kind of followed the same routine. I even wore an ugly vest. I wore an ugly vest the first time I was on her show. <laughs> uh, of course, Arts for Nevada. And then I included this. I reached out to all of uh, the elected officials of our state that I had met when I went out to DC um, for Arts Advocacy Day. I think it was in May of, of this year. Uh, Congressman Kewen, uh couldn't attend, but I appreciated him writing the letters say that he couldn't. And uh, I, you know, I think this kind of this is my last slide, but this sort of um, represents where I see Carson functioning. You know, not isolated, being the capital, having this communication with our elected officials and having them back us up. At the American Indian Awards ceremony, I spoke with the grants, um, oh, I can't, their, their, her title escapes me, but the woman from Cortez Masto's office. And so I'm having lunch with her next week. And, you know, they said, if ever you need a letter of support for any grant that you're writing, if you ever need questions about why you didn't get a grant, or you don't know about this grant, so these are the doors I'm trying to open locally, regionally, nationally. Um, one little note I wrote, I wrote to myself. I'd like to congratulate, I'm going to put on my NAC hat. I'd like to congratulate Elko County Art Club. The... Elko County Art Club joined the BAC today in being one of the 25 finalists for the Levitt Amp Concert Series. So of these 25 finalists, 15 will be chosen. But both applicants from Nevada made it, made it to the 25th. So wouldn't it be fantastic if both Nevada and our applicants made it to the finish line? We'll see what happens. It's out of the public's hands right now. But um, speaking on these terms, you know, I'm happy for them. Thank you. If there are any questions or uh, comments, you, please. Uh, I'd like to make a comment. This is Barbara Deneo again. Sitting here for the last couple of years and going over sort of all 24 different organizations around town, nobody's really understanding who's doing what to which and to whom, and how can we get this all organized, and how can we begin to grow, and all the work that was done to put together a master plan that went through all the hoops and everything we needed to do to get it approved by the Board of Supervisors, to get a cohesive plan put together, and to think in terms of how many years? How do we see this moving? And I know we had some conversation about, well, we bring somebody on board, and that poor soul has got to learn the business community, the community, the area, the, the everything. And I don't know about everybody else on the, on the board here, but commission. Uh, <laughs> for, me, for me, it was, I figured, two years hit the ground, meet them all, two years, get your feet wet, and then go underwater, figure it out, find out who the players are, talk in terms of how do we find more artist groups, like we had a couple here tonight, which is so exciting. And I have to say the energy, the, the comments I hear all over town, and what we're doing and beginning to build, and I think now, you got your feet wet, you're on the ground, and you did a wonderful job this year. And I, I think art has taken a real step up in Carson City. And I, for one, want to say thank you to you, Mark, because I think you brought real energy. And I think the next year is going to be very exciting. 
Absolutely. Here, here. Ditto. <laughs> I also li would like to um, express my appreciation to Mark for including our students from Western Nevada College to get out in the community and be part of uh, the festivities that are taking place. Um, I can honestly tell you that they're super excited and they're looking forward to future uh, involvement in the community. So thank you. Bravissimo. <laughs> I'll wait. Um, I have further comments about the capital collage, but I'll wait until the um, item number 10 commissioner comments. So we're moving, um, we're skipping the marketing update and then we're going right to the municipal code revision update. I know that uh, Joel was um, the point person for this and in his absence. Um, I want to speak to this and speak to it going forward. Um, the municipal code, and Iris and I are going to sort of uh, tag team this, this topic. Um, when we were looking for, I think, visitor bureau appointees to, to a board, we started looking at, at the code specifically. And this code was a document, um, Charter 2.41, that was created in 2008. It's only three pages long or so, and I was reading it, and I gave Iris a call. And as it's posted you know, on the Carson.org website, it specifies that the Visitors Bureau designates someone to this board that, I'm sorry. Oh. Well, it goes in front of the BOS. Well, okay. Let me let me let me rephrase that. That there's there's that there's members here that or, that originate from um, the Visitors Bureau, the State of Nevada Department of Tourism, uh, the Arts and Culture Coalition. Um, in reading this, it doesn't specify that. In reading this chart, it doesn't say that 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 is true. What it says is that the um, under cooperation of the Cultural City, the Carson City Cultural Commission, um, that the commission will work with its partners in the community, including, but not limited to, the Carson City Arts and Culture Coalition, the Western Nevada College, the Nevada Department on Cultural Affairs, the Carson City's Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Carson City Redevelopment Authority, and Carson City's future downtown business improvement district. So, um, this is a document that was made 10 years ago. Um, in doing the research of cultural commissions nationwide, and we'll just use our neighbor Reno as an example, that there are allocations on a board for, let's say, an artist, let's say, an educator, let's say, a citizen at large, um, someone that represents um, uh, the local governing authority, and so on and so forth. and. That sort of template, um, that Portland even goes further, wanting to know, you know, how much people make and where they live. I mean, they really want, you know, that chart to be a diagonal. Um, but you know, as any board, you want the, the board um, seeks to be the voice of, of the community, and um, and the more diverse that board is, uh, the more it helps. Carson City and, and what we do here. We help each other in doing that. So it's my goal to work in the upcoming months to really take another look at this. I know that uh, there are two, three board appointments coming forward and I'm opting to, I'm working with you know, the city manager's office and, and, and Iris on this, just to continue going forward, not to disrupt anything, not to disrupt those allocations that we've sort of been working on, for example, an appointment from the Arts and Culture Commission, an appointment from the State Arts Agency, an appointment from, who else, who else, who else? Uh, the Visitors Bureau. Yeah. Um, and the citizens, yeah, it doesn't even designate how many citizens at large we can have. So it needs to be dusted off and, and taken a look at. I don't, um, it, you know, in looking at the municipal code, it, it's, 
I, I love everyone up there. It's not my goal to shake things up. I want to make things better. And, um, and I want to take a look at this, and I'm, I'm going to put it in front of you. But I want to really seek uh, diversity and just really get, uh, th this needs to be updated, and, it needs, and we need to be operating as, it, as it's written um, and as other boards or commissions are, are operating. Does that make sense? Are there any questions to that? So I'm one of the people who was appointed. Yes. And I have no problem with that change. Okay. Iris, did I massacre that or? No, no. Okay. You did really well. Uh, just to add, when we've been working on the policies and procedures, as you know, the public art policy, and it has been a great learning experience. We've we have been um, helping each other and teaching each other and learning together, and it's been really wonderful. I am really excited for the final product when it finally is complete, but it is going to take some time. So with that, we're going to work the, um, the ordinance changes that are applicable to the public art policy. We're going to do it all at the same time. So um, I think that's So Iris, any ETA on that? We are... I think we were hoping for March, but it, it might be closer to... March 2029. <laughs> <laughs> it may be closer to the summer. Um, that's probably more realistic, but we hope, we're hoping for the best. You, you know, um, we've been uncovering these Easter eggs, and I, as I'm, you know, writing the policies and procedures with Iris, and, you know, it, it's one of these things, it's a, it's... You have to live in the city. You have to sit in the chair. You have to work with the, with the commission at least a full year before you can even know which way is north. Um, we both agree that the 60% that we have now is much well informed, much educated than what we could have put out the first month because it would have been constantly changing. Um, I think I mentioned before, so that not only are the policies and procedures, but there's, I'm also looking at the master plan, making sure that the route that I'm taking is what you guys wanted. Um, but in, in looking at the, at the language of that, it charges the commissioners, because I wasn't here, with duties that I'm paid for to do. So it'd be nice to get that updated as well. And then, um, you know, then finally, you know, the, the cultural commission charter. So there's a couple of, of of documents that I would like to get up to date. They're so closely entwined with each other mm -hmm. that um, that, we're, that I'm working the best I can. How does that impact public art, and how are you working forward on that whole process and procedure so that you know there's a way forward sooner as opposed to later? Yeah. Are you are you asking how um, the ordinance impacts the public art? Yes, but more so, you know, the, the fact of, of ownership. I know you've been working with Parks and Rec and all of the, uh, all of those entities with regards to this. Where are you in that particular process? Because we we do have artistic bike wrecks that are coming, and Absolutely. there'll be more to come. Absolutely. So actually, we we had a meeting. Was it yesterday? Mm -hmm yesterday uh, with the different departments to discuss some of the requirements that they'd like to see. I think we're, we're probably about best estimate in the middle of where things need to be. I know we're, sometimes we think we're 40%, sometimes we think we're 60, but I think we're, we're about 50%. I do think that as each project comes to fruition, like Mark said, we're uncovering um, Easter eggs, but it's great because then we're, we're seeing different scenarios as they are in real time. So did I answer your question? Okay. And I'll, I'll just add to it that, you know, the bike racks were sort of on my desk when I got here, but the bike racks and Michelle's sculpture, those are two really tough projects. Um, you know, baptism by fire. And so we put on our seatbelts and we're, we've learned a lot through this. I mean, I think, you know, I, I was joking yesterday at the meeting and I said, I think the first piece of art maybe I would have chosen would have been a painting <laughs> and we could hang it in city hall and put a little mending plate for security. And, um, so, you know, the, the, these these meetings and these trials are informing it, and you know we're we're still rolling ahead with stuff, you know, um, as what you know we can see out there. 
Now, as far as a licensed welder, because I know that's a real stumbling block, um, can the generator in Reno provide any direction? Um, I've reached out to them and a couple of other um, individuals that have been on the fence as opposed as to if they want to get licensed and bonded insurers. I've forwarded them to uh, Laura Rader for those details. Here's the thing with, um, with the amount of bike racks that people were promised mm -hmm. over two years ago, mm -hmm. um, funding from, fund, uh, funding in the name of a lost one, mm -hmm. with locations promised before downtown was renovated. Mm -hmm. um, I find myself in a pickle at times. And um, of course, there wasn't any um, research on if there were actual welders to take on a project of this capacity or that were interested in the price point of this capacity, the price point of which um, tripled once Joel and I got involved. Um, so, you know, we're putting this carrot out there, and it's in my interest that we would have one local welder um, have one set of paperwork that the city could refer to as opposed to, I, I, think, I think at last count there were probably 70 people involved in the project so far, um, and that's with one welder, uh, counting the sponsors and Muscle Powered and us and the other boards I have to go in front of. Um, my goal was to have it local because we have to go to the person's studio to check in on it. And I don't want to be running to Reno several times for several artists. So it's, it's super complicated. And I've, we, we've met with the sponsors, and I try to keep them up to date and letting them know the accurate, true picture of this project. Um, some sponsors have elected to um, just purchase a bronze plaque that we put on pre-existing bollards. That's the name of the pre-existing bike racks. Uh, some have, um, and you know, we, we have several bike racks downtown already, so we don't want to congest the area with that. We want to put these um, in strategic places to push the mission of muscle power, which is to make a bikeable Carson City, not a, bike, not a bikeable downtown corridor. Uh, and several sponsors have been thumbs up on that, saying, yeah, let's put one at, let's look into putting one at WNC, let's put in, look at putting one um, um, at the hospital and, and that sort. So that, that's a good example just on the, 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 the detail and complication of a project, but it does inform, um, you know, that, that ordinance and, and the process that we're doing. One question I have, have you contacted Aaron West of the Nevada Builders Alliance? No, I will though. He's not too far from you. He's right there on Division Street, and he may be able to provide you some direction. Thank you. All right, if there's no further comments or questions from the commissioners, let's move to the um, Culture Tourism Authority update by Chris. So I brought the September transient lodging report to give you an update. Joel usually does this. So um, for the month of September, the total room revenue for 2017 was $2,532,853. That's up $660,000 from the previous year. It is a 35% increase. We also had an increase in, I'm not gonna go through all these numbers unless you guys have questions. Um, we also have an increase in our occupancy. We were at the hotels this month on the back side of your paper there. We um, had 38,000 rooms available and we had 27,000 of them occupied for 72% occupancy. So it was a very good month for properties. So that's all I have unless you guys have questions. Thank you, Chris. Um, future agenda items. This is maybe where I jump in because I have a request for the, uh, the next, to include a report on the next agenda for our January meeting. I'd like to get a, rep I, I'm a little bit concerned about the level of marketing that was done for the Capital Collage event. I know this was the first time out, and we did as good as can be expected. 
for, you know, for an inaugural event that people are not accustomed to hearing about. They had no idea what was going to happen. It was really fun. It was definitely something different than anything else I've done in Carson City. So thanks. Um, but somebody told me that they met you hanging posters two days before the event. And I... And I wonder, and I never, I don't listen to AM radio very much, so I don't know if there were radio ads taken out or radio spots done. But what I'd like um, for our January meeting from the marketing staff is um, a report on what was done to promote the Capital Collage event, specifically print media, social media, radio ads, press releases, whatever whatever happened, I'd like to just get a list of that. Because there's a lot of visitors from all over the state that probably didn't know that party was happening that night. But we're here in town sitting in their hotel room. So, so beyond that, so I'd like a report on what was done as far as promotion of the Capital Collage event. But further, I'd like to know how the marketing resources within the Culture Tourism Authority are allocated and how much is being allocated for arts and culture promotion. You know, I don't know if you want to do it by, st I don't need budgets. What I need, what I'm looking for is like staff hours or percentage of time, an estimate of that. And then also I'd like to know how that's prioritized. How are those resources allocated? Who makes the decision on what gets marketed and what week it gets marketed? Is it the week of the event or is it six months before? So, so I, I'd like specific numbers on what happened with Capital Collage, but then I'd like a general idea going forward of how much marketing um, staff and resources are available to promote arts and culture in Carson City because that's what this commission is tasked with, is promoting arts and culture. So that's what we want to know. I know that you I know that you guys care you know wear a lot of hats over there and you're promoting a lot of different things because there's a lot of things going on in town now. And so I'd like to know, you know, maybe we need to go to the board of supervisors or something and ask for more resources. So, because Mark and I give our report, well, Mark and somebody from this commission gives a report to the, the, an annual report to the Board of Supervisors every spring. And so if that's, it, and so that'll be coming up in April or May, and so if we need to ask for something from them, then we should have something in hand so we know. So thank you. Hopefully that can be presented at the January meeting. Um. I can't envision what form that's going to take, but I, I'll pass that along to Kyle. Um, it can be verbal. Uh, I mean, or a one-page handout. Yeah. You know. Um, um, you know, we do have True Grit, the big read on the for, on the on the horizon, May and June, and that's going to that's going to make Capital Collage look like a pebble in the, in the well. Right, so and, we'll, and the, we will I'm roll up our to, sleeves to, and, yeah. and jump in and help yeah. whatever way we can, but we need to know where we, where we can help. Right. Yes, I, huh? I definitely met your friend, I think. I think I know who that might be, and posting those, mm -hmm. those, um, those flyers, and I think it's shown here that everyone knows that I was, my skin was in on the game. My skin was in the game and doing what I could, even reaching out to elected officials. Um, well, you've done a lot of outreach, and that's really great. You've done a lot of outreach over the last year. So then, you know, the promotion comes behind that <coughs> and you. the marketing. Yeah. I also wanted to say in the past, there was um, co promotion of events of different organizations, and now it's all going through you pretty much, and not you, but the authority. And there's, I don't see as much of that happening as in the past, where we had um, 
banner, um, for example, in the appeal, a front page, third of a page, maybe it's less than a third, where different organizations could use, like, sort of rent part of that space every month, whoever had things coming up, but it was coordinated. That was through the Brewery Art Center. And then the Visitors Bureau, before it moved downtown, would rent billboards on Route 50 or Route 80 and have events of different organizations co-promoted on it. So I don't know if that's cost effective anymore, but um, we're not having that kind of coordination now. So I will put that down as a future agenda item that we can discuss in full. Any other future agenda items? I think this is related to um, the topic uh, being discussed. I noticed that at the event at the museum, um, we did not have um, a um, an individual taking professional photos. So as a result, we don't have any any photos to showcase the success of the event. So in any way that uh, we could possibly um, help to um, make that improvement for next year would be yeah. fabulous. Yeah, that's important. There were three photographers at that American Indian Achievement Awards banquet the other night with flap jacks and flat jackets and lenses yeah. and stuff. I mean, I don't know who hired them, but there were three different ones. Yeah. And then Mark, as a future agenda item, I'd like to uh, bring up possibly taking Capital Collage to the next level and doing a Mardi Gras event so that you're not competing with Nevada Day and the powwow and all the other things that happen on that weekend. And you know, when everyone's having cabin fever in the middle of winter, that would be kind of fun. It seems such a natural fit, you know, that we yeah. could party hardy and have a good time. And, and I, for one, along the same lines, in terms of allocation of time, re financial resources, and so on, when you think in terms of marketing and PR and all that good stuff, and I come from a Bay Area, a long background in that, there are certain allocations of time and staff required to meet specific plans. Um, what is the yearly thought in terms of how much time is going to be allocated to what, whether it's bike, bikes or whether it's whatever's going on in town. So we get an idea as to what kind of resources do you need, you know, with the authority and or for the commission and so that we can all be highlighted, uh, you know. And I, and I think in terms of the symphony and Brewery Arts Center and the college and all of the rest of it, it needs to be a fair distribution of time, energy, and monies for all the organizations that are putting on events and doing things in this town. And again, a calendar and understanding of what's going on and who's doing what and to which and to whom would be very helpful for a lot of us to get, because we're planning calendars like four to six months in advance. What are we doing? And I'd just like to see that. The only thing I'd like to point up is that there's a specific percentage from the tourism authority that's allotted to the arts yes. and to the cultural yeah. commission. So you have to bear that in mind yeah. because that's how it's apportioned and it's up to us to figure out how we take those monies and make the most of it. So that's kind of where we are with yeah. that. That's a, a fixed number. Yeah. And it'd be good to know, just so that we know, do, do somehow we need to have an events to raise more money for that kind of thing. But we need to get it so that we're really out there and visible. So I'm just taking notes here for, so for future agenda items, am I hearing you correctly? And, and that's like a strategy, a marketing strategy for? That would work. Yes. For arts and culture, okay. Right, and where it fits into the broader mission of the Culture and Tourism Authority. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Just to recap, uh, Bobby Rader, uh, Kyle's report, discussion on marketing strategy, and Mardi Gras. Well, mm -hmm. capital collage. Fun. Okay. <laughs> thank you.
Okay, thank you. Um, so our next meeting is scheduled for um, the 8th, which is a Monday, January 8th of 2018. Um, Carson City Cultural Commission here, be there or be square. I will and, not be here, Terry. I'm okay, on vacation. Well, then you will be square. Is that, Janu <laughs> is that January 8th is listed here, 2017? It's, it's, it should be the 18th, 2018. And the Tourism Authority meeting is um, December 19th. We move the date. Mm -hmm. So, just so you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, public comments and discussion. Again, you're invited to come up for three minutes. Hello, Marla Miles, Nevada Artists Association. And uh, the Nevada Day Show is in progress, and we'd love to have you come and see it. It's beautiful. That's right. Great job they did this year. Awesome. And we will be closing from December 26th to January 13th. We are going to uh, recarpet the gallery and resurface the walls. Wow and sort of brighten things up a bit for the coming year. Marla, I'm sorry, what were the, those dates again? Uh, just December 26th to January 13th. And I'm the outgoing president of the Nevada Artists Association, and my successor is here tonight, Fred Allen, and he will take it forward. Thank you very much for all your hard but, work. And I'll still be coming to these meetings. So. Hello. My name is Dan Palmer. I am a longtime local. Uh, I've, I was, where's the button? I, uh, I've been gone for a few years uh, because I went in pursuit of a liver transplant, which I received two and a half years ago. I'm back home, I'm healthy, and even though I live here full-time in Carson City, uh, I'm a full-time musician. Uh, my residence is actually in Sacramento uh, because of the current health situation. All the liver transplant centers are in California. There's not one in Nevada. I'd love to be considered as a, for a citizen at large community uh, position but I'm not currently a registered Carson City voter, which is in the regulations. Uh, I'm also a videographer, which I studied that while I was at, uh, while I was sick. Uh, we're involved, my other half and I, in a lot of different things. Uh, volunteer, uh, I produce videos for various nonprofits. Uh, lo uh, nothing local, at, well, yes, I do have local productions going on, excuse me. Uh, one of the things that caught our attention that we participate in regularly that uh, I don't know what the uh, awareness of is here, but Willow Reindeer. Willow Bill, uh, okay, good. I just wanted to, he's in process. I believe all of, I've been out with him. Uh, we've been with him a couple of times, uh, lighting reindeer, putting him out there, out ready to go. So that's something I uh, appreciate. I was really excited when I read that uh, Mark Salinas had been hired. Uh, as an arts uh, commissioner, and so I'm really excited. I love Carson City. I love being here, uh, and there's so many things, great things going on. I look forward to being involved in some way going forward. So thank you very much. Welcome, and we hope to see you at more of our meetings. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Um, so I finished what I wanted to um, have on the future agenda items as far as number 10, commissioner comments and announcements. Anyone else have announcements? Okay, first of all, um, I want to just say that um, the um, Greenhouse Project Flower Basket Sponsorship campaign is in full swing. We're sponsoring for 2018, so if you liked what you saw downtown this year, it doesn't get there by accident. It takes businesses and individuals to sponsor. We have a total of 80 baskets. We have 20 sponsored thus far, and um, our special needs students and our students 
uh, at the greenhouse project um, through Carson High School are the ones that nurture those to go out. So if you're interested in that, carsoncitygreenhouse.org, you can download a form. Second of all, I just want to say thank you to our sponsors, our angel, angel donors, and the attendees that came to the Harvest Dinner. It was a wonderful event, and we raised uh, $45,000 for for to forward the program and what's going on over there. So that was a huge help, and we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations. One more thing, Concert Under the Stars is slated for July 11th, and Jefferson Starship will be the act this year. So. Um, I would just like to um, comment on uh, the magazine is now putting out an events and show specifically for uh, northern Nevada and we are including um, cultural uh, events. We have a section for cultural events. So I, I um, ask everyone to please let me know of cultural events that are coming up. We are, we're happy to have them in the magazine. It is distributed throughout uh, northern Nevada and um, all the welcome centers, the Reno Tahoe Airport, and so it, it has uh, great exposure. So please let us know of any uh, events that you have, cultural or not. But we'd like to say we do have a cultural section now in our events and shows publication. So please let us know. Okay? Thank you. Nice. Yes, it is. So I'd like to report on three organizations. One is the Arts and Culture Coalition that I represent has a meeting next week at noon at the Nevada Artists Association Gallery. And all the visitors here, the guests, are, are welcome to come to that meeting. And it's further discussion and coordination among the arts organizations and individual artists in Carson City. Then um, Mile High Jazz Band has a holiday jazz and poetry event. It will be at Kama Coffee on December 12th. So um, I hope you can all attend. Jackie Ford will be the vocalist with the big band. Then for Carson City Symphony Association, I want to announce that we have one more group under our wings, and that is a children's choir. It's called jo Joyful Noise Carson Children's Choir. And they have 20 children from age 4 to 12. And they will, their first performance actually will be in Gardnerville with their Christmas kickoff at Heritage Park on November 30th. But their first performance in Carson City will be on the Wine Walk at the Nevada Artists Association Gallery at 2 o'clock. Okay. And so... Um, I have, our association has several performing groups and educational groups, and I have a list of 12 events coming up. I'm not going to read them to you, but I'll pass out the list. Any other announcements, commissioners? Happy holidays, and we'll see you in January. Oh, we have to adjourn first. Happy holidays, though. I'll, I'll keep wishing you happy holidays. Uh, for possible action to adjourn, do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. <laughs> okay. Me to it, Karen. Good night. Good night. And happy Thanksgiving. Happy trails to you. <laughs> <laughs>